Paint Your Wagon, released in 1969, is a lively musical film that brings together the unlikely pair of Lee Marvin and Clint Eastwood in a gold mining camp. This movie is known for its mix of humor, drama, and music. Lee Marvin, with his gruff charm, and Clint Eastwood, showing off his singing skills, are two of the classic Hollywood actors who stand out in this film. While I don't have personal experiences or favorites, many viewers find Lee Marvin's performance as Ben Rumson particularly memorable. This movie has been a part of many people's lives, inspiring laughter and tears with its story and songs. Now, we're curious to hear from you. What is your most treasured memory or experience related to Paint Your Wagon? Your stories and memories are important to us, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Stay tuned for more surprising, funny, and touching facts about this classic film. Keep watching. The 1969 movie Paint Your Wagon brought a unique twist to Western films by combining adventure with musical elements. It stood out because it had songs and humor alongside the usual Western themes of exploration and gold mining. The film is remembered for its catchy music and the way it showed a different side of life during the gold rush. It remains relevant today as it represents a time of change and the pursuit of dreams, which is a universal theme. The movie also shows how people from different backgrounds can come together to create a community, a message that still resonates with audiences around the world. Lee Marvin's rise to fame was significant with his role in Cat Ballou, yet his career saw a decline after starring in a Western musical. The production of this film was ambitious, with a full-scale mining town built in Oregon's Blue Mountains, taking seven months and significantly exceeding the budget. The remote location presented challenges, including limited access to supplies and accommodations, leading to the cast and crew residing in tents and relying on helicopter transport. Marvin, initially involved in The Wild Bunch, was swayed by a lucrative offer from Paramount Pictures to take on the lead role in the musical, which included a million dollar salary and a share of the profits. In a notable shift within the film industry, the rights for a well-known production were acquired by Eddie Fisher from Louis B. Mayer in 1964, with plans to start filming in Cinerama later that year. During its development, there was speculation about a change in directorship, hinting at Richard Brooks taking over. However, Joshua Logan remained at the helm, concluding his directing career with this film. The movie also made waves in the music industry, as Lee Marvin's rendition of Wandering Star achieved remarkable success in Great Britain, selling over 34,000 copies daily and securing the number one position on the charts. Clint Eastwood, involved in the film's production, witnessed the creation of three distinct edits, one by the director, another by the producers, and a final version by the studio. He expressed a clear preference for the director's version, praising its quality over the others, yet it was not the edit that reached audiences. At its release, the film faced an uphill battle, arriving as audience appetites were shifting away from musicals. It struggled with budget overruns and delays, ultimately opening to a less than enthusiastic critical reception and failing to achieve the anticipated commercial success. This experience was pivotal for Eastwood, leading him to establish Malpaso Productions, driven by the desire to avoid the pitfalls he encountered during this production. Additionally, the film features a character named Horace Tabor, likely a nod to the historical figure known for his silver mining ventures in the 19th century, though the film's portrayal diverges from the historical record. In a unique turn for musicals, only they call the wind Maria, performed by Harv Prisnell, featured a trained vocalist. The pronunciation of Maria in the song is distinct, sounding like Mariah. The Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, known for their hit Mr. Bojangles, not only contributed the song Hand Me Down That Can of Beans, but also appeared as extras. During filming, Jean Seberg's personal life took a dramatic turn as she decided to divorce Romain Gary with the expectation of marrying Clint Eastwood. However, after production concluded, Eastwood ended their relationship, which had a significant impact on Seberg's mental health. In the pursuit of authenticity, John Truscott went to great lengths, commissioning the creation of lace handkerchiefs by specialists for background actors. Meanwhile, Gene Seberg's personal life was marked by a tumultuous relationship with Clint Eastwood, which ended abruptly, leaving her deeply affected. In a twist of fate, 
Lee Marvin's rendition of Wandering Star resonated with audiences, achieving unexpected success and selling over a million copies, a significant milestone at the time. In the making of this classic film, Gene Seberg's vocal performance was provided by Anita Gordon, while Clint Eastwood and Lee Marvin sang for themselves. Lee Marvin's rendition of Wandering Star achieved significant success, topping the United Kingdom's music charts and earning a gold record. The role of Elizabeth, initially intended for Diana Rigg, was recast due to her illness, with Candace Bergen, Jane Fonda, and Natalie Wood being top considerations. For those watching the DVD release, they would experience the original 4-minute and 20-second intermission, a feature retained from the film's initial screenings. In a bold career move, Lee Marvin chose to star in a musical western over a war film and a potential role in a classic western. His decision was financially motivated with a million dollar paycheck and profit sharing on the line. Despite the high stakes, the film did not meet expectations upon its release. Meanwhile, Marvin's decision not to participate in another war themed movie led to his co-star, Clint Eastwood, taking on the role he declined. The production itself was marked by challenges, culminating in the director's explosive finale on set, signaling the end of a demanding filming process. During the production in Oregon, Clint Eastwood and Gene Seberg were involved romantically, a relationship that ended abruptly once filming concluded. This sudden change deeply affected Seberg. Concurrently, Eastwood engaged in a separate, undisclosed relationship with an extra, securing her a role in the film. Bing Crosby was initially considered for the lead role, which suggests a different direction for the film's casting. The fictional no-name city from the film does not correspond to any historical location in California during the Gold Rush era, but a real place named No Name exists in Colorado, known for its small population and scenic canyon. The stage production that preceded the film adaptation made its debut in 1951 and enjoyed a successful run. James Barton, Tony Bavar, James Mitchell, and Olga San Juan were among the principal cast. In an unusual production detail, horses needed for just one scene were retained for months instead of the expected week. Andre Previn, the music director, shares an interesting account of how Anita Gordon was chosen to provide the singing voice for Gene Seberg. Contrary to his initial belief, it was not Gene Crane's voice he had admired, but Anita Ellis's. Despite this mix-up, it was indeed Anita Gordon who lent her voice to Seberg in the film. On the set of this western musical, the atmosphere was charged with tension and contrasting personalities. Alan J. Lerner, the writer, needed medical supervision to manage his amphetamine use, which led to frequent disruptions. These disruptions took a toll on director Joshua Logan, who was battling undiagnosed manic depression. His absence on the first day of filming caused a stir only to be found asleep in one of the film settings. Lee Marvin, known for his dual nature, struck a friendship with Logan. His courteous demeanor was offset by his habit of drinking on set. Despite this, he delivered flawless performances, disproving rumors of any serious disputes with Logan. The role of Elizabeth saw many rejections from top actresses of the time, and even after Leslie Ann Warren was cast, her pregnancy led to her departure leaving the role to be filled after several considerations. <laughs>